MTN. Everywhere you go. Project Fame! What's a feeling? Here they go. <laughs> Ooh. Hi. 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 I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited to be here. Okay. Who be that? Who bent for you? Alpha. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, so excited to be among you people. Because you guys are really wonderful. Trust me. Um, I'm saying this because I watch you guys almost every day. And I want to say that it's a very tough competition. You're all good, trust me. You're all good. There's nobody that is the least. I watch it every day and I can say that and also from the response of people out there everybody has his or her favorites it's not like the other seasons that you have some people that people love some other people that people don't like and all that but this season everything is just so right now I would say um, first of all I would say congratulations to whoever is going to win in advance oh thank you <laughs> let the best person win trust me um, it's just I'm just here today to discuss my album it's just like a mini listening you know um, and uh, here is the album first of all I'm going to give you one after another before I leave <laughs> thank you thank you so much and uh, I'm a writer I wrote all of my songs Hi. Welcome. Um, I wrote all of my songs. I know that a lot of you are writers too. I don't know. I've not because there's a time where you have to write your own song in the academy to show that you could really write. It's um, writing is basically how you feel. I'm also going to give ch um, room for you to ask me questions, but please don't ask me very hard questions my I'm still new in the industry thank you very much uh -huh. it's a gradual process so I want you to also know that when you live here it's not gonna be easy this is project fame you're competing with people like you that don't really know anything the real competition is out there not here so when you're done from here just be ready carry everything that Uncle Ben does to you in the class and everything Mommy J teaches, everything Miss Kaffee says, everything that you carry from here, just carry it like that outside. Because in as much as Uncle Ben pushes all of us to the wall, it's gonna help. When you get out there, you 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 would see things that are worse than what Uncle Ben does here. It's for good. It will help you when you get out there. So first of all, they would play I would talk about the album one after another. I think you should have your own so we can you know, talk about the songs. Thank you. Thank you. Oh shit. This one is um, very, very familiar already. Because you already heard it. 
and you know the title tomorrow. So if there's any question you want to ask me about the song, first of all, I got inspired by our daily lives outside. Um, I would say if I look at my life now and uh, a few years ago, it was not like this. And from where I'm coming from, it's it's. I never had. I wouldn't say if I, I didn't have a bad background, and I didn't have. I wasn't a rich kid, so I was always comfortable with whatever I have, whatever I see. That's what I'm. I'm cool with it. But I was not. I didn't have what some of my mates had at that time. So I looked at my life and checked. I looked at now and then and also I looked at people out there that are like me that are struggling and I was like okay fine I could do a song you know because I'm this type I get inspired by anything I see anything at all I see I put it I, I try as much as I can to make it musical so I was like okay fine I could just I went to the studio with TY Mix and um, I was like okay what's up I want to do a song and I was like okay what do you have in mind I, I could write, but I could also, if you give me the beat, I would also write, according to what you give to me. So I told him, okay, give me a beat, make some, let's try and do some, let's work together. And he said, okay, and he started the beat. Uh, I told him, okay, I, I don't like this stuff, I don't like this stuff, I like this one, I like this one, it works for me. I'm like, okay, fine, let's do something about it. And I started, first of all, I thought about myself and what I've been through in life and where I am today. First. And then second of all, I thought about everybody out there, people I see, you know, my friends, their lifestyle, my neighbors, everybody around me, what they go through every day, what other families go through, you know, what I have, some other persons may not have, and what they have, I don't have. So I tried as much as I could to like, okay, fine, let me put it into music. And I came up with Tomorrow. I listened to the lyrics very well. It was, it's, it's, uh, I think the first line was, uh, life is a journey, put your shoes on. It's, it's a normal, it's, it's just, it's, it's an everyday life, what you see around you. Put your shoes on, life is a game, truly, life, it, life is really a game. So I was like, okay, fine, let's just do it. And we came up with tomorrow. So if there's any question you want to ask me about that, or if you want to come up with an inspirational song, you could just ask me. Let's... Um, you said you got the beat before. Did you write the song before getting the beat? And I got the beat before I wrote the song. Uh, so how did you fin finish the song? Okay, it wasn't Sometimes. easy though. I recorded this song four times. I have four different versions of the song. The first, the first one didn't sound like this. I was not convinced. I went back and told him, okay, I don't like this thing. Take it out. I went back again, listened over and over again. I'm like, okay, I came back, I don't like this one. So I had like four different versions of the song. And then I, I threw it out to people to listen to. A couple of my friends are like, okay, listen to this, listen to that. What do you think? And they're like, okay, I prefer this one. So I always let people say what they like when I write. So, see. Uh, you better put your shoes on. Life is a game, you better get your game on This life in every bed of roses And something where I don't notice No today is a easy, make you just a take, I'm easy If not in day to day, tomorrow you fit it, get it plenty Know where to lay your head tomorrow, if it be different story We fit fight today, tomorrow we fit be friends forever If you're not good today, tomorrow go surely day better, eh You don't understand this part, so Let's not stress ourselves. Let's not stress it. Okay, you understand me. Oh, okay. Um, it's uh, that's my language. Uh, Owoko Yanana means even if how do I describe? Even if the rain falls, Otuko Binana. Even if the night comes, even if people around me disagree, my life is better my life will be better or my life is better anyhow you want to put it do you understand uh otuko binana even if the night comes even if the, the the moon does not shine my life must be better so it's just like you are prophesying into your life 
you understand so basically that's that about tomorrow let's do body hug okay body hug was actually produced by whiz boy we went to the studio together so he was like okay we want to do a song that will be very relatable to everybody even the market woman can sing it that was the idea we went with to the studio and then he started the beat and he was like okay um when he played that i remember mario i don't know if you remember that game <laughs> yeah so i was like ah okay what do you want to do with this he said okay chill and then he 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 just structured the beat he didn't finish it he structured the beat and he's like let's do this song i thought if it's high life why don't we relate it to let's say weddings you know and that day i was wearing a body hug a body hug <laughs> long sleeve it was cold and i was like oh my god thank god i wore a body hug today i'm like but you could actually put that in a song though i said oh really okay let's try um i looked at him and i said i used to call him when we're together and we're joking i call every guy around me baby that's him so i was like okay fine let's baby let's try this one. and i was like okay let's try baby you they got me like body hug he now replied you they got me like body hug and i was like okay fine let's make this the chorus and that was how it came you understand it's also good if you have a chemistry with your producer or the person you're working with or if you know that you cannot do it on your own you could go with a couple of friends you understand and when you're doing it people that also understand music like you when you're doing it they'll be chipping in some things for you and it might not be the way they put it to you but you you understand what you want you could just use that idea and like okay fine let me let me just make it the way I want it to be and then we came up with body hug uh, we started I started uh, I went back into the studio the vocal booth I was like okay just give me the headphone and I started saying rubbish I was just singing I kept I love to be in the zone of the beats if I'm not into the beat, I can't give something that would interpret what that beat is saying. That's me. And then we started. I started saying a lot of things. I sang and sang and sang and sang. I'm like, okay. I listened to everything I had done. And I, just, I liked just one. And I took that one. Restructured it. Added some things. Took out some things. And made it the first verse. I listened to it again. And I got the second verse. I was like, okay fine let's just i think this is the song basically this song was i did this song it took me 35 minutes to write this song that's that was one of the easiest songs i wrote because it's high life it's it's a very calm song it's relaxed it's just how you feel and then there's something i want to say if you're writing a love song and you're in love it's easier it's easier to write a love song when you're in love and also, it's also, I'm not saying I was in love when I wrote Body Home. No, I'm not saying that. No, no, I'm not saying, trust me. But I'm just, I'm just telling you based, based on experience here. Yeah? There's nothing wrong with being in love, trust me. But it's, it's easier when you're in love or you had, you've been in love before. You, you think of the experiences and then you put it into your writing. It helps a lot. So we did this song and that's how it's going. Body hugging. Very simple, like that's why me and you now want jealousy. Hala now, no matter the weather, oh, that's why me and you jealousy. They hala, no matter the weather, oh, that's it. Uh, now for wage a lot, I don't understand evil, trust me, I don't understand one thing in evil. But as an artist, you have to learn a lot of languages. The ones that you, I don't even understand Yoruba. I only understand few things in Yoruba. You know, the, you know when you want to learn a language, it is the other side of the language you will understand first before the real one. Uh -huh. That those are the things I understand. I'll just basically sit down, get somebody that understands Yoruba, and ask the person, okay, what does this thing mean? How can I interpret what I'm trying to say in English in Yoruba? And the person changes it for me. But if it's not, I try as much as I can to get the bounce. If it doesn't go with the bounce of the song, I'll tell him, okay, look for something easier. Something that's, that's similar to what I'm trying to say, but 
the easier version of it. So I try as much I work with a lot of people when I'm writing. Especially when I'm writing um, a song I need to put different languages, I get people that understand that language and I also do music that understand that language. So basically that's how Body Hog came about. Oh shit. Huh? Okay. This was love. Okay. He has and a video. I, I, I truly yeah, yeah. I really, really, I really like it. Like seriously. I, never I, got really liked know, it. I got to know you, you wrote the song when I came to Kia. Oh, okay. I never like, really liked the song though. I don't like any of my songs. Seriously, I love the song. Yeah. I love the song. I yeah, mean, I don't yeah. like any of my songs. That's me. I love to listen to other people's songs than I listen to my I song. love this song too. Oh, okay. Body more than this one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, are you serious? Yes. And I recorded this. This was the last song I recorded. I nearly didn't do the song. It was, I went to the studio. Del B is one of the producers I work with. And we have, we have like a chemistry. He's like my brother. You know, I go to, it's something that, after Project Film, he was the first producer I worked with. So from there, I understood, I understood the fact that he understands my sound. He always gives me what I love to do. And so I went to the studio, I was like, okay, Oga, make beats for me. I want to do one song. I was like, what kind of song? What do you have in mind? Um, let's do something that they could actually dance, but it still, it has a rhythm. You know, there are some songs that we do, people can dance, but it doesn't really have a musical rhythm. It's not sweet, but it's just, you understand. So I was like, I wanted to have a rhythm. And he said, okay, fine, let's, and we started. He started the beat. I was like, um, it sounds a little bit like something I've heard before. And I said, what? I said, Limpopo. And then he said, I think because it's a characteristic of a producer, when he's producing a song, if you go to a producer, he would give you what he knows how to do best. That thing might be in another song, it will also be in your song because he's the one that produced that particular song. So I try as much as I can not to work with one producer. I change hands because your song might begin to sound alike if you work with just one producer. Your whole album will sound alike. So I try as much as I can to use other people. And I told him, okay, oh yeah, just let's try. I call Chidima. She's, she's, she's a very sweet person. She's my friend. We're always together. And then I called her like, okay, what's up? What are you doing? She said she's, she's bored. She's at home. Okay, come now. Let's go to the studio. Let's just let's play, play around. Let's do a song. She said, okay, fine. And then she drove down and got to the studio. We were just Jones and Shah. We were Shah just playing around the beat. And he came. And Nigerians love reputation a lot. What makes your song sell is the amount of reputation you have in the song. You might be very surprised that that thing you were repeating or that very funny thing you are saying in your song is what they know. They don't know any other thing. Or that everywhere I go, everybody know. Now me, they run the show, the show. Nobody's hearing that part. Do you get? Exactly. Suddenly, suddenly, that's what they hear. Or the end of every sentence in your song. That's what they know. If it has rhymes in it, it is the end of every sentence that they know. You understand? Okay, let me give you an example. When it gets to the mass part, let me give you an example. When I heard this, when I heard that part the first time, when we were doing the song together, the only place I knew in the song was her part. Well, basically, I don't really like my, I always don't like what I do. I love people's own, not my own. I think her part is gone, I, I guess. I would give you a candid advice, honest opinion, that's the truth. Yes, we all know how to sing. But the truth is, when you want to start, nobody wants to hear how sweet your voice is these days. Nobody. Give them something they can dance. Give them something very simple. Very, very simple. When you get there, you can start doing all the sweet melody, all the acrobatics you want to do in your voice. And <laughs> hey, you can do it. They will buy. But for now, it's always like that. You could mix your album up. Sing and Jones at the same time. Give them what they can, a market woman can sing, a roadside mechanic can sing every day. Some roadside mechanic does not understand what Arakeli sings. 
let me see, let me give you the, what I'm talking about in her verse. K K K D K D K. Mm hmm 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 hmm. Tide, Those are the places they know. As in, just the end, the end part of the song. As long as it has rhymes, they will sing it with you, even if they don't understand what you're saying. That's where we are. So before we get out of here, I want you to, as much as you can, as you'll be working on your album, mix it up. You can sing in some songs, you will join in some other songs. Because there are people out there who want to, there are still people that want to listen to good music. But as much as they want to listen to good music, eh? Do you know it is the roadside and the, the pe pepper seller and the mechanic that really listen to songs than people that are working. Those are the people that listen to songs, not the, the high class suit people, workers, no. They don't have time to listen to songs, except on Fridays. And that Friday, you think they want to come to the club and listen to Selling Dion? No. They want to hear an Azonto. They want to do a Tigi. They want to do... That's just how we are, basically, in this part of the world. So, please, when we come out, let's try to mix it up. Jones and Sing. So they will know that, ah, this one can sing, Sha. Let's go to the next song. Okay. Okay. When you are ripe to do an album. Right to an album. Basically, I think it's, first of all, it's you. It's what you want. But left for me, I would want to do a couple of singles, put it out there, let the people listen to it, get recognition, let people know your face. Because if you do an album and people do not know you, it will sell. Nobody will buy. They love to buy albums from people that are already known. Do a couple of singles, you know. Just keep recording, keep recording. A song will come that you want to put out. And trust me, nobody knows a hit song until it's out. It is the, the way people accept the song that you know, okay, this song is a hit song. You listen to a song, a song and you're like, oh my God, this song is a jam. Oh, now hits with this. You're in trouble. They might not like it. It might not be the song. It might be that one that you're like, I don't like this song. This song doesn't make sense. It might be that song. So you don't know a hit song. You keep doing singles, drop singles, appear newspapers, go for interviews, go for radio interviews, let the people know you and know your music. It mustn't get to a point. I wanted to say, okay, let them let them be able to relate with relate to when they hear your voice, they're like, okay, that's such a person singing, you know. Some people it might not be like that for them. Some people just have I think some people have a very short Okay, let me not say that, so that we don't get, let's not contradict things. But the truth is, you don't have to sit down for too long before you drop an album. As long as you do your work well, you keep recording, you drop singles, you push the single. The amount of push you do on a song is what determines if it will blow or not. There are a lot of good songs out there that we don't get to listen to because they didn't push the song so when you push the song and you do your push well it will become a hit song even if the song is not that good we hear some songs they are not you might not like the song but the way they push the song makes people like the song they push it on us and we're like okay we're not hearing any other good thing out there it is this one we're hearing you don't have a choice you just like it so basically drop singles you know, come out more, let people see your face, do, go for events. If you're not doing anything, buy tickets, go for events, do red carpets, let them shall be seeing your face. You understand? Be around, be in the faces of people. Let them be seeing you all the time. And then drop songs and push. Let's say two, three songs. Just drop them, push them. Let them know, oh, okay, Roland, ah, okay. That Roland guy, that, ah. Then when you drop your album, like, ah, ah, that guy, don't. 
And then when you drop your album, try as much as you can to also make noise about it. Social media is very important. Twitter, Facebook, very, very important. When you come out, get a small team for yourself. Have them around. Someone that's handling your PR, someone that's handling, handling this, handling that, you understand? And then when you're a little bit known, you could decide to drop an album. But if you just come out and, you know, go to the studio and drop an album, it might not sell because they don't know you. And it's wrong. It won't be nice when you drop your album and then you are the one going to sell it by yourself. You'll not be driving motor and telling people, ah, my album, or you put your face on your car. Now what's going happen? You understand? Let it, let's try do promo and then let it sell itself. It's better. Your okay. favorite. Yeah. Thank you. Um, basically, yeah, I don't limit myself to any kind of music. I say this all the time. Because if you want me to, I'm this type that I grew up doing music in a very hard way. My mom is a choir mistress in my, in my church, the women's department. <laughs> it's, it's um, how do I put it? A doma choir, that's what they call it. And then uh, I have a couple of cousins and nephews that sing. You know, so it's, it's basically. And then I started from Sunday school. I listened to every kind of music that time. I try as much as I can to listen to every single. As long as I like the song, I'll listen to it. So I grew up like that. I listen to. I can listen to a reggae song as long as I like it, and I can sing a reggae song as long as I like it. I will do R&B and I will sing it as long as I like the song. I grew up like that. Right now, it's very hard for me to sit down and say I do pop. I do only pop. No, because you will hear an R&B tomorrow, and you will hear a high life next tomorrow. So I try as much as I don't restrict myself. I don't put myself in a box. And then I get I get inspired by a lot of things around me. As long as I'm inspired and I'm with my pen and I want to write, if I'm in the zone, I will write. I don't care the genre. I don't really. I don't. I don't do that. But it could be that when you listen to your sound all the time and the kind of music that you produce all the time, you will know the genre that you belong. You understand? You might be doing. You might do high life and then you go somewhere. They make a beat for you, and your delivery is a high life delivery on the beat. And it happens like two, three times on a song. I think that's that's where you really belong because you might not be comfortable with some other things you do. It's also it also ap appeals to your mind, the kind of music you do that makes you feel okay. But these days, if you want to follow the kind of music you do that makes you feel okay, you will not make money. Let's be truthful to ourselves. So you have to. Strive, do every every kind of music. Do you understand? Please do it for everybody. They want to dance, make them dance. People want to listen to good music, give them good music. You want um, a wedding song, give them wedding song. Do you understand? Entertainment. This is this is music entertainment. So you entertain. Do everything you can to entertain everybody. So that's me, basically. August. Yeah. How did you come about? How did you come about that? The name. Yeah, the name. Sometime okay. In August. Sometime in August, I was born. Yeah. Sometime in August, I launched this album. Okay. We are in um, September. Oh, I would have said sometime in August, I'm here. I'm talking to. I'm talking to everybody. You understand? Sometime in August applies to a lot of things. Like, uh, sometime in August, my mom was also born. Sometime in August, the. Uh, it could be, it's just, it's in between. A lot of things happen in August, I, and that really means a lot to me. Basically, my birthday. So I thought, okay, why don't I name my first album after that? A lot of people, uh, Tiwa's album was uh, when I was, when I was a, what, I've forgotten the name. What's, what's the name again? Uh, people are inside, you don't know. The album came when you are in, you understand? So you will not know the name. I'm trying to remember. People just try to, you try to give it a name after maybe your name or your mom. Some people dedicate their first album to, your, to their mom. Some people dedicate their first album to their dad or basically how you grew up or 
I googled it and checked. Okay, this is what people basically. This is how you name an album. You you want to title your album, and then I thought, okay, fine. Let me just. I was born this month, and the album is dropping this month. What else? I couldn't think of any other thing but to just call it sometime in August. MTN, everywhere you go.